que te quiero tanto y tu nube quieres nada. Esta gitana está loca, pero lo quito de atar. Que lo que sueña de noche quiere que sea verdad. Many of you have ever heard of duende. Great. Well, for those of you who haven't, you've probably experienced it at some point, perhaps through the arts. Federico Garcia Lorca was a well-known Spanish poet, author, writer, and composer of the 20th century. He introduced the world to this concept, and he defined it as that mysterious power that we all feel but no philosopher can explain. Indeed, Nietzsche was fascinated by Duende, as was Bizet when he composed the opera Carmen, and many others. From the artistic perspective, Duende is about as far opposite from technical perfection as you can get. It is about expression and attraction and authenticity and should be the goal of any performance. All that has dark sound has duende. Duende speaks to the bitter root of human experience. It is neither good nor bad, but it is deep within us and it is powerful and primal and resonates within our being. The closest English word would be soul. I was fascinated by duende long before I knew this word existed. As a child, I was mesmerized by the Spanish gypsy Carmen. Something about her just captured my imagination, and it's no wonder my favorite game to play was that of Carmen. I would dress one brother up as the bullfighter and the other, the youngest, as the bull. <laughs> and I, of course, would play Carmen, and I would swing my fake castanets in the air and twirl my squirt around. Though I had no idea what I was doing, clearly I was captivated by Carmen's duende. So as you can see, my upbringing was unusual. Instead of going to football games on Friday nights, I would eat taquitos and listen to opera. This was my unique life as the first-born American, daughter of a Bulgarian father and a Mexican mother growing up in Michigan. <laughs> as a child of coincidence rather than globalization, I had two vastly different cultures to choose from and a new one to learn about. I was a hybrid, born into a state of cultural confusion. And the only way to survive was to become a chameleon and learn to adapt to all of them. It wasn't long before my father placed his efforts on integrating into American society, but it was quite the opposite for my mom. As far as she was concerned, she was going to do her best to make sure that we grew up as dual citizens with passports to prove it. And so the trips to Mexico began, where I spent every Christmas breaking piñatas and singing posadas with my cousins. But I didn't really fit in in Mexico. For one thing, I was a foot taller than all of the other kids. <laughs> and I had a funny last name. And going home to Michigan, it wasn't much easier. Uh, in school, I had a difficult time in English class. I knew nothing about American football. 
And I still had a funny last name. So where was home? Where did I belong? Neither here nor there, and somehow embarrassed about that reality. Like a kid in the cafeteria, I desperately wanted to fit in. I wanted to find my place. At home, it wasn't much easier. <laughs> For one thing, my parents didn't speak a common language. So they were very clever in that they taught me both of their languages, and it became my job to translate. For example, my mom would say, go tell dad dinner's ready in Spanish, and I would run and tell my father that it's time to come to dinner in Bulgarian. So my fascination with language was really born out of necessity. It's defined my life and influenced my everyday thinking. I was constantly analyzing how we communicate and trying to find ways to make this process easier, more efficient, and more meaningful. But even at a young age, I was aware that words are just words. Some things couldn't be translated. Intention, for instance, and emotion. These were things of the soul, which I felt were best expressed through music. When I discovered music, I was struck by what a powerful tool to communicate this is. To me, singing is a marriage of my two passions, language and sound. I knew I wanted to dedicate the rest of my life to this great art form. But why opera? Well, I was drawn to opera for two reasons. First of all, the incredible power of the human voice to project without amplification over an entire orchestra. And secondly, the beauty that a human being is capable of creating with their own body. People may mock the implausible plots of opera, but I think that's simply not the point. The reason that opera is so grand, it's simple. It draws on the most complex human situations in order to evoke catharsis. Catharsis is defined as the release of deep emotion. I believe that it is through this process that we can hopefully achieve a deeper level of empathy. And that, that is the power of the arts to change the world. In my journey as a singer, I found one thing to be true, that all people, regardless of nationality, race, age, gender, we have one thing in common, and that is our capacity to feel emotion. This is our deepest universal. We all laugh, cry, feel joy, love, and sorrow, and even embarrassment. It is our common language. It is that of the soul. And so my job being on stage is not to share my story. It's not even to tell you my character's story. It is to hold a mirror in front of you and ask you to reflect upon yourselves. Perhaps I am, as the title of Federico Garcia Lorca's novel suggests, in search of duende, and have been since I was a young girl, fascinated by Carmen. But it is this quest that has led me on a unique artistic journey. When I started to sing, I was motivated by communication and sound. But I've recently realized that something's changed. I'm now driven by purpose and helping people. And I find the idea of connection and seeking truth to be the most fascinating. See, I believe that artists can be more than just entertainers. I believe that we can be educators and advocates and even healers. We can help address the things that cannot be put into words. And together, we can look at the delicate issues facing society. I know for me, in my memory as a young girl, it was my arts education that really helped me cope with those challenges. And so today, I'm very proud to be an advocate for arts education in public schools across the country. I've realized one thing, and that is, I'm not alone. <laughs> there are many of us out there, hybrids, mutts, mestizos. In fact, we're probably all mutts of some sort. And it's my own interest and identity that has led me to start my own initiative called the El Camino Project. El Camino aims to look and explore 
Latin America's history and culture through its music. It draws on the name of the historic Camino Real Trail, which connects the United States and Mexico, and also serves as a symbol of our own personal journey. It is my hope that in learning about Latin America, I will have a greater understanding of what it means to be Latina in America today. El Camino hopes to do this in three ways. First of all, by curating unique concert experiences in which storytelling is key. I also hope to offer workshops to kids like me. But most importantly, El Camino hopes to play a role in the preservation of culture. We are no longer in a place of coincidence for globalization. Globalization is the trajectory of the future. And I fear that on this new path, we may lose precious artistic and cultural heritage. To me, this is worth fighting for because it's made me who I am today. So, in my search for Duende, my questions have changed. I've now come to realize that the only measure of any progress is the questions that I'm currently faced with. And so today, rather than ask, how are you? I'd like to ask, how is your soul? Yeah.